There is one ambiguous case when it comes to the log signs, and that's the side-side angle, SSA. In this case, we have two sides and one of the angles opposite those sides. We're going to need to look at the height of this triangle in order to get a hold of this case. And this is actually defined by B times sine of A. And this uses the law of sines on this smaller right triangle on the left. The first case has that A is bigger than this value of H, which is B sine A, and A is bigger than B. In this case, there's exactly one triangle that'll satisfy these conditions and we can solve like normal. The case where A is actually equal to H gives us one right triangle. So instead of just a normal triangle, we do have specifically a right triangle in the case that A and H are equal. If A is less than H, if A is smaller than our height, there are actually zero triangles that satisfy this. Our side A is not long enough to form the full triangle. Finally, we have that if A is bigger than H and A is smaller than B, we actually have two triangles. We have this one triangle here on the left and we have the larger triangle. And these two angle Bs of these two different triangles are supplementary. They add up to be 180 degrees. So if I call this one X and this one Y, we have that X plus Y is equal to 180 degrees. So let's look at some examples of these. For this triangle, I have that A is equal to 81, B is equal to 62, and angle A is 43 degrees. We can see that A is bigger than B. H is equal to the side length of B times sine of angle A, which is approximately 42.28. So we can also see that A, which is 81, is bigger than H. So this tells me I have one possible triangle. Let's start by finding angle B using our law of sines. It says that side A over sine of angle A is equal to side B over sine of angle B. We can cross multiply. This is 81 sine B is equal to 62 sine of 43 degrees. Sine of 43 degrees times 62 is 42.28. And we can divide both sides by 81 to get that sine of B is approximately 0.522. We can then use a calculator and the inverse sine function to figure out what angle would give me a sine of 0.522. And when we do this, we get that B is approximately 31 degrees. So this angle here will be approximately 31 degrees. Now that I have two angles, I can find my third angle. This says that 180 degrees is equal to 43 degrees plus 31 degrees plus angle C. So 180 degrees is equal to 74 degrees plus C. We can subtract 74 degrees from both sides to get approximately 106 degrees is equal to C. So that will be this angle here, about 106 degrees. Finally, we need to find our last side. We know side A is 81 and angle A is 43. So this should be equal to side C 
over sine of angle C. We can cross multiply to get 81 times sine of 106 degrees is equal to C times sine of 43 degrees. 81 times sine of 106 degrees is about 78.04. And sine of 43 degrees is about 0.68. We can then divide both sides. To get that, C is approximately 114.4. So that would be my final side length is 114.4. And I've now solved this entire triangle. I have all three angles and all three sides. Next, let's look at this case here. B is 71, A is 51, and angle A is 75. We can see that A is less than B. Side A is smaller than side B. H is equal to B times sine of angle A, so 71 times sine of 75, which is about 68.6. .6. So we can also see that A is smaller than H. In this case here where A is smaller than H tells me that there is no triangle that works in this situation. So there's no possible solution to this problem. Let's consider this triangle here. I have side lengths 12 and 16 and angle 35. We can see that A is smaller than B. In this case, H is equal to B, which is 16, times sine of angle A, which is 35. And this is approximately 9.18. So A is greater than H. And this tells me that I actually have two triangles. So I have two answers to this problem. Let's work through each of them. Using the law of sines, we have 12 over sine of 35 degrees is equal to 16 over sine of angle B. This tells me 12 times sine of B is equal to 16 times sine of 35 degrees. 16 times sine of 35 degrees is approximately 9.18. In dividing both sides by 12, we get that sine of B is equal to 0.76 approximately. We can then use a calculator and use the inverse sine function to get that angle B is approximately 50 degrees. So this is our first solution that tells me this angle here is about 50 degrees. Now that I have two angles, I can find the third angle. This is 35 degrees plus 50 degrees plus my missing angle. 180 degrees is equal to 85 degrees plus C. And then I can subtract 85 from both sides to get that 95 degrees is equal to angle C. So that will be this angle here. That's 95 degrees. Finally, we have that 12 over sine of 35 is equal to my missing side C over sine of 95 degrees. That tells me that 12 times sine of 95 degrees is equal to C times sine of 35 degrees. This left-hand side is 11.95 approximately. And sine of 35 is 0.57, so this side is about 0.57C. I can divide both sides by 0.57 to get that C is about 20.8. So that gives me the third side of this triangle, 20.8. So this would be the first possible solution to this situation.
for my second case, my first law of sines gave me this angle here to be 50 degrees. The second case will be 180 minus 50 degrees, or 130 degrees. That would be this angle here in my second possible triangle. Now that I have those two angles, I can easily find out the third. I have the first angle is 35, the second is 130, and then I have my missing angle. This tells me that 180 degrees is equal to 165 degrees plus C, which tells me that angle C is equal to 15 degrees. So this angle here is 15 degrees. Finally, we can find our missing side. We have side A over sine of angle A is equal to side C over sine of angle C. This tells me 12 times sine of 15 degrees is equal to C times sine of 35 degrees. 12 times sine of 15 degrees is approximately 3.11. Sine of 35 degrees is approximately 0.57. I can then divide both sides by 0.57 to get that my solution is about 5.4. So my second solution, this side length is 5.4.